I'd like to welcome everyone to our second annual STEM conference, uh, Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. And we like to call it a Girl Genius Day. What our goal is for today is for you young ladies to experience something new and something different in the area of STEM. We want you to massage your minds. We want you to come out of here thinking that, gee, when I grow up, when I go to college, or if I don't go to college, if but I get into a, a career field that has science, technology, engineering, and math, yes, I can. Yes, I can do this. Yes, I could be a scientist. Yes, I could be an astronaut. Yes, I could be a chemist. Yes, I could be a biology teacher, an engineer, an architect. Those are career fields out there for you young ladies to excel in. And our goal today is just to get you to start thinking about STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. We want you to have a fun day. If you have a question, raise your hand and ask. Don't be shy. You'll be working with team mentors from West Catholic, Catholic Central, Grand Rapids Community College. At lunch, you'll be joined at lunch with a female mentor, a young lady in the STEM field. So it's gonna be a day for you to experience new and different things, and we really want you to enjoy it. Uh, before we start, I wanna th thank our corporate sponsors. Uh, Kettering University out of Flint is a corporate sponsor. Uh, AMDG Architects here in town is a corporate sponsor. Rockford Construction is a corporate sponsor. Uh, Grand Rapids Community College, where we're at, they, they, they help us dramatically. Uh, West Catholic and Catholic Central High Schools, uh, they're all corporate sponsors. We've all worked together to pull this day off, so I want to thank our corporate sponsors for all of their help and assistance. Uh, on the agenda, first of all today, I'd like to introduce Dr. Healy, the provost from Grand Rapids Community College, who's going to have some opening remarks. Doctor, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome to Grand Rapids Community College. We're so thrilled that you're here. So if you're a genius, just raise your hand. I want to see all the hands up because you're all, you're all geniuses. Come on. Hey. We are geniuses. Let's give ourselves a big, big applause. Okay. Because we are. You are so shy. Let, let me hear a, a huge applause. Let's give ourselves a hand. Good, good. We are very happy to partner with these uh, wonderful groups from the community um, to host you here at Grand Rapids Community College today. And it is my pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Melly, Mary Gilliam, um, who's going to be the keynote speaker for you this morning. And I, I, she's going to be fabulous. You're going to have so much fun. She is an assistant professor of chemical engineering at Kettering University. She has a BS and a PhD in chemical engineering from the University of Missouri at Columbia. In 2006, uh, she took a position at Exatech as the plasma technology leader, supervising global technology programs and directing international research and development teams to develop next generation coded polymer products targeting new applications. Gilliam joined Kettering University in 2010 where she teaches chemical engineering courses and conducts research on plasma technology and material development with a team of faculty members and students. She is the inventor of four patent applications and author of 10 journals and art of uh, journal article, articles and conference proceedings. And she lives here in Michigan, in Brighton, Michigan, with her two children. So let's give her a very, very warm West Michigan welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Can I have a little bit louder? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. All right. I like that. I like that enthusiasm. So how many of you have been here last year? Were any of you last year? Good. A good portion of you? Good. Happy, to, happy that you're here again and happy to see so many other new faces. Um, before I get started, let me pull up some slides that I have I want to go through. Um, so give me just a second. Alright, looks good. So we are here 
for the Girl Genius Program, right? We're here to teach girls about science and engineering and to try and generate interest in those areas for girls. But you might ask, why is it so important? Why is it important? Why do we need scientists and engineers? Well, let's look at it from the perspective of some of the global issues that we have today. And we'll see how important it is now more than ever that we have more scientists and engineers working to solve these problems. So. <clears throat> so health and disease, right? There are so many diseases today that are uncured, that have no cure. And there are so many people living in third world countries who do not have access to affordable health care. We need scientists and engineers to develop those cures and therapies in order to allow people to live healthy lives, right? So what kind of scientists and engineers do you think would work on health care and disease? Anybody? Doctors, absolutely, yep. Medical, yep, medical scientists. Therapist. What else? What about biologists? Do you think biologists work on these programs? Absolutely. What about geneticists? Yep. What about chemists? Absolutely. Chemical engineers, pharmaceutical engineers. There are so many teams of different type of types of scientists who come together to work on the same issue, right? Energy, energy is another area that is of huge concern in our world today. We, most of our energy today comes from limited sources like coal and oil. So we need scientists and engineers to develop clean energy sources that can sustain the energy needs of our world in the decades to come. So what types of scientists and engineers would work on energy? What was that? Archaeologists, to an extent, yeah, maybe geologists. Um, thought? A civil engineer could work on this. Um, chemical engineers would work on this. Chemists, physicists, right? Physicists work in this area as well. Electrical engineers, you think they might work on that? Yep, absolutely. What about uh, petroleum engineers, mechanical engineers? Yep. Again, so many different types of scientists coming together with their different perspectives to work to solve these problems. What about the environment? Is that a critical issue today? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. We need scientists and engineers to develop ways to keep our air and our water clean, as well as manage our waste in a sustainable way. So what types of scientists and engineers would work on this? Any thoughts? Chemist, absolutely. Forgot. Environmentalists. Environmentalists, environmental engineers, way back there. Marine biologists, yep. What else? Anyone have any thoughts? Geologists. Geologists could work on this, absolutely. What about, let's see, chemists, chemical engineers, civil engineers, even physicists? Botanists, yep, absolutely, there you go. So what about feeding the world? Does anyone know how many people live on this planet right now? Who knows, somebody I haven't heard from. Seven billion, more than seven billion people. How many people live in poverty on the planet? Not quite half, but it's a lot. It's 1.4 billion people, right? So we need scientists and engineers to come up with ways to help feed our people, right? What kind of engineers would work on this? And scientists. Yep. Biologists. Biologists. Yep. What else? Agricultural engineers. 
Anyone else have a thought way back there? Can you say that one more time a little louder? Chemists, absolutely. Chemists, uh, food scientists, um, biochemists, right? Geneticists, so many different scientists coming together for this. So with all of these world challenges to be solved, we need methods of faster information sharing and computer computing technologies to be able to help and support this problem solving, right? So we need scientists and engineers working on this area as well. What kind of scientists and engineers, yep? Computer engineers. Computer engineers, very good. What about you back there? Is that what you were gonna say? <laughs> Who else, yep? A little bit louder. Software testers, exactly. Software testers and engineers, right? Um, physicists work on this, uh, electrical engineers, material scientists, right, to work on the components of the processing systems. And there are so many other issues that face our world today that we need scientists and engineers working on them, right? What about for exploration's sake, right? Science for exploration's sake to help answer some of the world's questions like where do we come from, um, is there life on other planets, right? Physicists can work on those, astronomers, you know, many different types of engineers and scientists can come together to work on so many other issues we have. But now I'm going to switch gears for a couple minutes and I just wanted to share with you my path uh, to becoming a scientist. So I am a plasma scientist. Does anyone know what plasma is? Yep. Light source plasma glows, yes. Someone I haven't heard from. Who haven't I heard from? You with the hat. Yes. What was that? A material, um, let's say, how about you? Yes, it does make up the stars. Bingo, yep. It's the fourth state of matter. Did anyone know that there were four states of matter? There are actually, some scientists are saying now there are five, but the fifth state we won't worry about right now. Um, so four states of matter, right? So what do, you, what do you think is the lowest energy state? Solid. Solid. If you add a little bit more energy to a solid, it becomes a liquid. You add a little bit more energy to a liquid and it can become a gas. And if you add more energy to that gas, what can it become? Plasma, exactly, right? So plasma is very interesting to me. It's, it has so many different properties that the other states of matter do not have. Did you know that it can conduct electricity? It has, it has positive and negatively charged species in it, right? And it glows. There are many sources of plasma in nature, such as lightning, the aurora borealis, stars, somebody said, stars are made of plasma. In fact, 97% of our universe is estimated to be in the plasma state, right? Pretty cool, huh? So I, I didn't know when I was your age that I wanted to be a plasma scientist scientist or a chemical engineer, right? Um, but I did know that I liked science and I wanted to d have a career in science. How many of you right now know that you want to be a scientist or engineer? Yep, wow, a lot of you. How many of you are not quite sure but it could be a possibility? All right, a lot of you as well. Um, what, kind of, uh, what kind of science are you interested in? So does anyone know what kind of science they, d they most likely want to go into? Animal science? Animal science? Um, electrical. electrical, engineering maybe? Very cool. Yep. Forensic science, very interesting, yep. Cures for medical issues and diseases? Archaeologists, very interesting, yep. A computer engineer. You sounded very sure about that. I love it. <laughs> All right, a couple more. 
marine biologist. Very interesting. You must like animals. Chemist. Yep, I love chemistry. Computer engineer. Okay, very good. I'm so glad to see so much interest at such a young age right now. So there was a study done that I want to share with you by the American Association of University Women. This study was done in 2010, and they did a report on it. And they wanted to look at reasons why fewer girls go into science, engineering, and math than boys. So this graph that I'm showing up here shows the percentage of freshmen going into uh, science and engineering programs by females and males. So if you, oops. So if you look at the blue, right, uh, bio, biological and agricultural science, sciences, there are more females than males. But in every other area, computer science, engineering, which is what I am in, uh, math and statistics and physical science, there are more males going into those fields than females. Why do you think that is? Do you think it's ability? Are boys just more capable in those fields than girls? Absolutely not. You know what this study found that it was? Not ability at all. It was stereotypes. We have stereotypes in our society that might tell girls that they might be less capable in these areas than boys. Not because they are, but just because of those stereotypes. So when girls hear those stereotypes and maybe subconsciously kind of believe them, then they're less likely to go into those fields, right? So the message is don't, you know, don't worry about those stereotypes. Don't think about them. If you are interested in math and science and you like it, explore it, right? We need scientists and engineers today. There are so many problems in our world, as we talked about, and so many more. And now, now more than ever, we need scientists and engineers to solve these problems, right? So you're not, you're not born a scientist. You're not born a genius. You become one. And how do you become one? You become one through imagination, curiosity, exploration, innovation, commitment to solve these problems, right? That's how you become one. You are one, right? You're here today. You're here today on a Saturday morning to learn about science and engineering, right? That's pretty cool. So I want you to have fun today, most of all learn, and go be a scientist. All right, thanks everyone, have fun. One more thing, sorry. I just wanted to introduce my daughter. I have a daughter who's 10 years old. She's in fifth grade and she loves math and science. And um, I just wanted to introduce her. <laughs> this is Alice. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, next on the agenda, I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Jennifer Batten from uh, Grand Rapids Community College who's gonna give you your marching orders for the day. Uh, doctor? The doctor is in. Good morning. Okay. I just want to tell you a little bit about the logistics of the day. Okay. Um, first of all, I want you to look at your name tag and see what team you're on. Okay. All right, now you also have a room on your name tag. It either says multi-purpose room or it says Raider Grill, okay? So if your name tag says Raider Grill, you're gonna stay in this room and you're going to look for your team leader who's got the name tag, okay? If your name is multi-purpose room, you're gonna go down the hall and around the corner to the back hallway and there'll be people to direct you and then you're gonna look for your team in there, okay? 
And we're gonna head over there in just a little bit. Okay, another thing I wanna let you know is that we have Girl Genius points today, okay? And so what you're going to do is um, when you do something good, your team works together well, you're gonna get a little ticket, it says Girl Genius Point. You're gonna write your name on the back, you're gonna put it in a bin, and at the end of the day, we're gonna have a drawing for prizes, okay? So the more Girl Genius Points you get, the better chance you have of getting a prize, okay? Are there any questions? Yes, ma'am. Can you yell a little louder, honey? Uh, your team leader will award you points. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. We're going to, yes, ma'am. What? It's on your name tag. If, you're, if your name tag says multi purpose room, you're going to go around the corner and down the hall. But if your name says Raider Grill, you're going to stay in here. Okay? And if you need any help, you can ask anybody with a yellow shirt, okay? Any other questions? Okay. We're going to have a little bit more of a robotics demonstration for you here, and then we're going to break out into our teams, okay? Okay, Mary Beth, you want to come up for a few more minutes? at all about the program, the robotics program? Okay, my little robot that isn't here, the FTC team, I, it's sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. I still have openings on that team. That is the competition that we will be hosting at West Catholic on the 17th of November. There's about 80 teams in the state of Michigan for the little robots. 40, up to 40 of them will be at West Catholic and about 40 of them will be on the other side of the state. Whoever, then we compete on the 8th and the 15th of December and on the 15th, the winners on the east side of the state and on the west side of the state, whoever wins those two competitions gets to go to world competition for the last week of April in St. Louis, Missouri. So we're hoping that our big robot will win the state competition too, or will win the engineering design award, because then we get to go also, so that the big robot and the little robot will be there at the same time. <laughs> also, what I love to do is, when we are in our big season with our big robot, which starts January 5th, we are at West Catholic every Saturday for the next six weeks after that. And any of you are welcome to come any Saturday. We are there from 10 to 4 at West Catholic during the big season, and you can help to build the big robot with us. Like I said, I want you to understand this is not just building a robot. There's a marketing aspect to the thing where you want to get the other teams to remember you. We have to buy gimmicks that we pass out at competitions. We design our T-shirts. Um, there's an accounting aspect. So you're, there's your math thing, and it, I will teach you how to use QuickBooks, and we run Excel, and we need to come up with a budget. You know, we gotta try to attract other donors. So it's not just engineering, and I get all these high school kids that tell me all the time, well, I'm not smart enough to be on that team, or I don't know anything about building a robot. You don't need to know anything about it. We are gonna teach you. Actually, I'm not an engineer. I'm an accountant. My husband is a robotic engineer, He's one of the mentors that you would work with. We work with engineers from GE. We work with engineers from Saturn. We work with an engineer from Oliver Products. We work with all kinds of different people. But we, it doesn't have to be just, oh, I think I'm not smart enough or whatever. That's not an excuse. That's what I tell the kids all the time. That's not an excuse. You don't have to think that you're not smart. You don't th have to think that you are really smart. It's just, it's an aspect. And when we go to these competitions, these kids, how many kids went to a football game last night? Okay, so you see how those high school kids cheer for their high school team at the football games? Imagine all these high school kids, 200 teens in the state of Michigan, cheering for that robot like you guys cheered for your football team last night. 
Can you imagine that? They dress up, they paint their bodies, they color their hair, then they cheer for their football team, which is that robot. And these are kids that probably didn't go to the football games during the fall season, but they go and they cheer for this football, for this guy, for this robot, just because this is what they love to do. But a lot of them were in the band last night, or they were there on the sidelines cheering on their football team too. But during the winter, this becomes their football team. And it is so awesome to see these kids cheering for these robots. And we have cheering competitions. There's a cheering, there's a spirit award that they pass out at the different competitions. So you try to get that. They play all this really neat music and these kids get up and they dance in their costumes on the field when the, like, trust me, there's a ton of technical difficulties during the, the robotics competitions. So we always have downtime. So during that downtime, we have a DJ that plays music and the kids all get up and dance and the people in the stands get up and dance. And it's just, it's a, it's a very neat thing if you haven't ever seen it. So anybody have any questions? Like I said, I'll be at West Catholic tomorrow at 1.30, so you can come anytime. I will be there until five o'clock tomorrow if anybody wants to come. I'll show you the robotics rooms. We have four different rooms at West Catholic. I'll show you, I'll give you a tour of our, ass, of our stuff and hopefully you'd want to get involved, okay? Thanks a lot, have a fun day, girls. I'll be back at the, at the end of the day. Uh, shoot a t-shirt out to somebody just uh, sit down here for a while here we go we're gonna whoa <laughs> well, the, the theory works. Good job. Okay. Okay, come on in, have a seat, and we'll get going here. Once again, I'd like to thank everybody for coming to our second annual STEM conference. We had 209 young ladies register, which uh, we, last year we had 175, so it's been a fantastic day. I'm very, very pleased to, uh, to announce that our keynote speaker is from the Van Andel Institute. Who, uh, who can tell me what the Van Andel Institute is? Julie, we have a problem here. No, no, no. no. Uh, with us today is Dr. Julie Davis-Turner. She is Assistant Dean at Van Andel Institute, who's gonna be our keynote speaker in closing here. Welcome. you got your pen? Oh, now I have to be quiet, don't I? All right, so get your name on your folder and flip the folder over, or open it to a place where you can find some notes to do. You need a folder. Here we go. We need some more folders right here. If you still need a folder or a bag, just put your hand up. All right, so now we are here to talk about possibilities, what can be. And so to start with that, we gotta find a foundation. So since you amazing STEM girls here today of Grand Rapids in the neighboring area are here thinking and doing and acting like you're going to in the, in the future, I'd like to ask you to go ahead 
and write down on your folder somewhere. You can draw it, you can, um, you can think it, you can write it, you can, you can chart it. What was the best thing today? Just reel to yourself, don't look at your neighbor, do this from inside you. It's kind of like that coin toss, just decide on your own. What was best for you today? And if you got a couple things, write them all down. So go ahead. What was the best thing since you got up this morning and arrived here? Just, just write it down, write it down. 20 more seconds, so write fast if you've got a, a tomb to, to write down. All right, 10 seconds. Everybody get something down. You're gonna want this written down, I promise. All right, 10 seconds are up. So now turn to a neighbor. I want everybody to find a neighbor. And I don't care if you've never seen this person before, if she looks like your worst enemy, just find a neighbor and tell them. Tell them what the best thing about your day was. Go, you got 30 seconds, go. Turn around, talk with them. Come on, come on, here we go. Come on, talk, 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 talk. You talking? You got a neighbor? You got a neighbor? Talk, 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 hurry. 20 seconds, talk to your neighbors, hurry. You got neighbors? You've got a partner? Okay, you got partners, talk, talk, keep going, 10 more seconds. Come on, you wanna find the best thing of the day? 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, now here's the rules. I teach, I've taught all kinds of grades. I've taught from second grade through middle school, through high school, and now I'm a professor and an assistant dean just across the street and up the hill a little bit. So, here's, I have very few rules in my classroom. Usually, I never let you hold up your hands, okay? That's just my rule, no hand holding up. And the kids here that I met from my CCD class, no, you can't hold up your hand in her, in her, in her church class. Okay, so, we got a kind of a lot here. So what I, here's the rule. You've gotta tell the best thing that your neighbor said. So, we're gonna kinda have to hold up hands. All right, you're first. What'd she say? Learning about filtering water. Filtering water, excellent. Here you go, go ahead, next. Can you pull that apart and give this to the girl that's talking? Wait, what she said? Yeah. She said that the best part was the canoe. The canoe, can you give her one of those? Go. Um, she said that she liked um, fil unfil filtering the water. Filtering the water. Okay, here's another rule. Sorry, I'm making them up as we go. If something's been said, you gotta say something new. So if you've already got the thing that was said, you gotta say something else. Yes, ma'am. Uh, learning and having so much fun. Learning and having fun, go. The food. The food, excellent. Oh, I didn't give you guys stuff, did I? There we go. Here we go. She has a really good one. I gotta get to the other side. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Um, my friend got interviewed. She got Inter interviewed. Oh, nice. Oh you got to remind me, okay? That is a really good one, okay? I'm going to have to go faster here, aren't I? Okay, so, so tell you what. Tell your neighbors. Mm, no, let's keep going. If you want. She loved all the activities that we did. Excellent. You, go ahead. Um, the cookie mining. Excellent. Give one to your friend. Good. Yes, go. Um, the last part, the filtering the water. The filtering of the water. Excellent. Sounds good. Ladies, yes? Um, she liked the coin toss. Oh, and I didn't hear you on skip. The coin toss. The coin toss, excellent. Okay, ladies, yes? Um, getting to people she, that she didn't, getting to know people that she didn't know. Getting to know people she didn't know. Yes, ma'am. Um, my friend liked it because she liked the filtering the water. Okay, now remember, come up with a few new ones and then we'll, we'll wind up. Co the coffee here. <laughs> okay, that's a new one. That's excellent. Excellent. I love it. Okay, go ahead. Uh, she liked the um, the uh, the arteries. She, she liked the arteries. Excellent. Excellent. Did I get you? Did I get you? Okay, there we go. All right, three more. Yes, ma'am. She liked the food and meeting new people. Being with people. Excellent. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. She liked the um. Meeting new people. Okay, all right, good. You guys can share those amongst yourself. Give one to her. Yes, ma'am. She liked meeting new people. Okay, anything else? And... Yeah, one more? 
She liked lunch and she liked the filtering. There we go. Okay, so a lot ha oh, I didn't get to you guys at all, did I? Okay, somebody who had a hands up. Yes, ma'am. Um, she, all the people, like, were nice. What, what, so the people were? You said it. Nice. Nice. Yes. Nice. yes. yes. As opposed to other places. Can you share with the people around you? Awesome. And one more. Uh, she liked the cookie, the cookie mining. Excellent. What, so, and everybody knows what you mean about that, don't you? Yeah. Okay. Excellent. So, ladies, we're going to go now. Um, but the point of this little exercise is that, Look at the diversity. Yeah, there was some repetition, right? But the things that you liked about today, the things that you keyed in on, the things that mattered to you are different. They're different than, any, than a lot of other people. You went through the same things today. And sometimes as women in science, we're gonna go through the same classes. We're gonna go through and do some of the same things that thousands of other people in our universities or schools are doing, but we're gonna have a very individualized approach to it. And so what I'd like to do with you today is to open up your mind to be able to look at some of the differences that we're gonna, we're gonna come up against, the challenges, and what, what we can do to turn them into opportunities, and that's this idea of possibility thinking. So today, we're gonna talk a lot during this time. And um, I think, as I really thought about how to talk with you about kind of what, what life in science as a woman is like, um, I thought we should talk about where you are, the origins. And you kind of have to hear a little bit about me because you'll know why I'm crazy then after you hear a little bit more about me. We'll also talk about choices and the kind of things that we face and probably uniquely face because we're women, okay? And we are, we're all, we got those two X chromosomes going on, right? And then the commitment thing at the end. So um, did all of you do the, the coin toss today? All right, well somebody who did the coin toss, who's got the coin toss, who did the coin toss? Um, so somebody here close. So tell us what was happening with the coin toss in this room. Um, the first time she kept flipping all the, the coin, mm -hmm. it kept landing on tails. It did, and that's the data of the, of the scenario that you, were, that you were presented with. But So what was she asking you to do with the coin? You know, everybody's tossed a coin, but what was she asking you to do? What was she, when you did this or this, what was she asking? To um, guess which it would land on. Mm -hmm. Had, yep, and, and how did she get you to be sure that she knew what your guess was? Do you remember the word she used? Commit? Yes. She used this word of commit. So she didn't want you saying it was gonna be heads and then going, oh no, my friend said it was gonna be tails. It's gonna be tails. So that's what this last part is about. Sometimes that's hard. And I want you to think about that as we go all the way through this because that's where we're gonna do some more talking. Okay, so where do you come from? From where do you come? Who is inside you? Why are you who you are? This is your origin. Sometimes it's people, right? Sometimes it's places. Sometimes it's the schooling you have. Sometimes it's the place you work or your best friend. But, but our origins mean a lot to who we are because they give us this foundation. So I have to show you just a little bit about my origins. This is my, I have to find my laser pointer here. This is my grandfather, my maternal grandfather, Owen B. Craig Jr. and his brothers and sisters when he was, and his mother, there's mom Craig. When, and this is like 1942 or 43. And then this is my dad's parents, Dwight and Evelyn Davis. Right, and then these families had Mike, that's my dad, scrawny and like the guys at your school right now. Yep, and of course he had these terrible older sisters. Well, one older, one younger. And then this is my mom with this beautiful round face. Again, she was about four years old there, I think, with her older sister, Sharon. And I show you this because it's really funny to look at them, right? They look really funny. Um, but it was hard to live then. We hear about the economy, we hear about recessions, we hear about flooding and Superstorm Sandy, and we know it's hard here. It was really hard there, right? No, no technology like we have it, no automobiles. I mean, you can see this old, whatever, 40-something some, or 50-something uh, car right back here. But it was hard, it was very hard. So those people are my heritage, right? 
So I grew up in northern Indiana. I'm sorry I wasn't from Michigan, but I was just across the line down by Roanoke, Indiana. That's I-69 that goes from Flint all the way down to Indianapolis. And I live close to Fort Wayne. This, although it has a lake now, or a little pond now, this was my house. How many houses do you see close to mine? <laughs> well, there's one, and I think there's one up here. Um, that was my babysitter right up there. But I grew up in a bunch of land, right? My dad was a brick mason, my mom was a beautician, and I had two choices. I could work hard or work harder. That was my choices. And so in spite of that, and you know, we, we grew all of our own food, we, um, we canned and um, froze all of our food. I mean, I sound like I'm some old lady, don't I? Well, here I am when I was about four, and I went to school, and guess what? Like you, I kind of liked it. It kind of clicked. It kind of made sense to me. And so I did what I did at home. I just worked hard and, and made everything happen. And so pretty soon, those challenges and those things that I was faced with, like weeding the garden and helping can and freeze and um, feeding the dogs, and we had 38 cats at one point, and we had seven goats, and I had to milk the goats when my dad was out of town because he was a brick mason that traveled all over Michigan to do brick masonry. So all of those horrible things became challenges. So on your folder, write down some of the challenges you're having right now some of the tough things that are happening to you. And, and if you just wanna like make a little, you know, thing to remind you that you were going through this now, you don't have to share something and we're gonna keep this quiet. We're not gonna share out loud on these things. So you can remind yourself the things that are tough for you right now. Maybe it's a particular teacher or a particular course. Maybe it's things your parents want you to do that you don't wanna do. What is challenging to you right now? What's hard for you right now? Now I'm here to encourage you, and I wanna tell you that all those hard things in my life suddenly started becoming opportunities because I had discipline and I had listened to my parents and I had done things the way they told me, not the way I wanted to sometimes. I, I, started, I started having opportunities that um, came my way, and so grades started getting better, and I graduated at the top of my high school class, and I started in some competitions for speech and debate, and I was, I was in um, one vote away from being at nationals in, in, in uh, national debate, two-man debate, and I had these crazy opportunities to, to compete in other places that still make me smile. I did not have to wear a swimsuit, by the way. Um, but I got scholarships that way. And so coming from a family with no resources, I went to college com almost completely on scholarships and graduated, whoops, did I go one too far? Sorry. Yep, graduated with my BA, a Bachelor of Arts in Biology Pre-Med, and I had a chemistry minor, and I had a music minor, because I love to sing, love piano. So now, think for just a moment how your challenges can build you, how the things that are hardest for you, maybe it's riding a bus, or maybe it's taking care of a kid brother or sister. Think about how those things are helping you become the person that you will be when you're really challenged and then you can rise above everyone. So I encourage you, the smallest thing every day is gonna help sharpen the edge of your mental blade and make you ready and able and nimble when the time is there. So I encourage you, not unlike the crazy things I went through, to, to be encouraged and to keep going and persevere. And because it's at that point, you have gotta start making choices. And I know you're making choices now, so you can write down a few of them if you like. Sometimes it's whether to try smoking or sometimes it's the other things that we don't wanna talk about today. Um, I'm happy to talk about it with you afterwards, but sometimes it's just, oh, do I wanna talk back to my mother or do I not wanna do the extra credit or do I, you know, you have lots of options. As you get older, the, the challenges that you faced and the choices that you've made and the, and the discipline that you've put on yourself saying, yeah, I really wanna do A, but I'm gonna do B or C because I know I should, those things will make a difference to you. Those will give you possibilities. There are a few rules here. You gotta get your education and you can get it and be exceptional. I'm not telling you where to go to school. I had some, I had some great schools I've attended and I had some, some just real good schools I've attended. And I learned incredibly at, at each 
time in my life. Hanover College, this is this degree. Then I went down to do my, to start my PhD at Emory University in Atlanta. Two years into that, I thought, oh my gosh, this is way too hard. And I was involved in a church then that took a, a mission group out to Ecuador. And so I went to Ecuador for a couple of weeks and served the people and dug some foundation footers and that kind of stuff. And I came back and I was like, this is why this is so hard for me. I'm not cut out to be a scientist. I'm cut out to go and teach and, and serve. And so I came back, quit my PhD program, and went to be a teacher for five years, or three years out in the Atlanta area. Sure enough, I, after teaching for a few years, do you guys know you're hard to teach? Do you know how rough it is? I'm teasing, I'm teasing. But I went back to grad school, got my PhD at Philadelphia at University of Pennsylvania. And it was at that point I had some more choices. I had choices, um, and so here's my grad group that I joined at, at Penn in Philadelphia. And then, and then pretty soon I'm about, I'm pushing 30, and I was married at this, and, and um, so guess what happened? I had a baby, right? And then I got pregnant with another baby, and so there is Claire. They're now, one of them's in college, and one of them's a senior in high school. And then before long, I was at, I was doing my postdoctoral fellowship, so I got my PhD at Penn in HIV, so human immunodeficiency virus, and how it gets into the cell. And then I went to the Centers for Disease Control in Atlanta and did my postdoc. That's like the training that you do before you get to be a professor. And I worked on tuberculosis and HIV there. And I was there three years and had my third kid, that's Kate in the middle, some of you know Kate, my blonde kid who was at zoo school last year. So it's Will, Claire, and Kate, and they're all real big now. But I'm telling you, these are challenges that became, that became incredible parts of my life, and now they're big, and now they're starting to love me again, and it's really wonderful, all right? And here they are. They're big, and, and, um, and, and those choices in my life to be a, an active mom and to, be, and to even drag them back across the country, because we were at the University of Virginia for eight years, and to bring them to Michigan, where we're closer to grandmas and grandpas, those choices are things like you're going to face a little bit in your future. Future. But think about the choices you're making right now, right? Think about how hard they are and think about what really needs to be the basis of them. What is most important to you? So look at where you're from and look at, at, at where you want to be, okay? All right, so sometimes as we look at the choices in our life, it's like this tree. Looks a little dreary and cold and dark, right? We see this tree all the time. But it's how we look at it, ladies. This same tree from the same car on the same day looked like that if you just changed your perspective. So instead of looking at the tree and focusing on the dreary cold outside, you can see the beautiful snow, you can see, you can focus closer, you can focus far away. And that's the point of that other sh picture I showed you at the beginning. Remember this possibility picture, isn't that gorgeous? Over the top of Grand Rapids, it's like you're out headed toward Lake Michigan. Well, guess where that is? That's from inside my office. So think about the way you have, things appear versus the way you can, you can focus far away, you can focus close. Some days you gotta be real close. You gotta say, yep, I gotta just get this stuff done for this class and that class. I gotta do this for mom. I gotta take care of my kid brother or sister. And then some days, and, and parts of those days before you go to sleep at night, you can focus far away and see where you're gonna be in 10 or 15 years and, and re rework your path to get there. Now, sometimes it's even closer, right? Some of you up close have noticed I've got broken glasses, right? Sometimes, so this happened last night in the bathroom after the glasses door closed, can't find the little screw, right? So I could have come here today with no glasses just to look cool not have tape on my glasses, right? And to show you what a neat person I am, how together I am. But I decided my sight was more important and I wanted to be able to read your name tags and I wanted to, you know, I'm old now, so I need these old lady glasses. So it's, it's those kinds of choices. I woke up with a pimple this morning and it was like, oh, I gotta stand in front of all these people with a pimple. Sometimes it's those kinds of choices that can cripple us and cause us to stop in our tracks and not wanna go forward and not be seen. Fight against that. Think of the possibilities, the amazing things that can come out of you engaging and being part of things, okay? So, let's, let's have some fun now. Think about some places you can, you can commit, all right? So th you're gonna think, pair, and then share again. Take us about three minutes, four minutes. Are we good on time, ladies? 
Are we good? Are we doing okay? Okay. So think of the places where you're going to commit to some choices you've got, right? Go ahead and write them down. Get them on your, on your folder or on one of the pieces of paper in there. Take about 30 seconds of quiet time. Just make your own decision. Think about things you're wrestling with at school or home. 20 more seconds of quiet. Okay, now share with your neighbor. Everybody's gonna have a neighbor, okay? Share with your neighbor, talk with people, get some advice. This is your scientific advisory board. Good job, both of you. You talking? Visiting? Good. Excellent. There you go. Visiting? Get advice. You need friends. Talk to your friends. Get some advice. Did you? What, you know, just talk amongst yourselves. Get advice from each other. We'll t keep talking. That was pretty fast, right? You good? Did you keep talking? Get some more advice, okay? Keep talking, okay? Keep talking. Keep talking. You got advice? I'm getting any advice. Get some advice. Women are the most helpful, okay? Women are incredibly helpful. I got one. All right? There you go. Did you get one? Are you talking to each other? Just keep talking. Keep. Remember, we need each other, so use each other. Get some advice from things, from people, okay? I, well, I just mean they, they came apart. See how they're taped? Okay? You give some to somebody you found, okay? Did you get advice? Yeah? What kind of advice did you get? Smile. Exactly. Ooh, hang on to that a minute, okay? Do you guys get advice from each other? Get some advice. You need each other, yeah? Excellent. Oh, and you got, did you already get a, you've already got one? Excellent, did you get advice? TV or something? They're just taping. Yep. Yeah. You already have one, right? Yep. Yeah. There we go. Ladies, you good? Did you get some advice? Okay. Good. Good. You got advice? Now, tell me. Did you get good advice from your neighbors? Did you? Did you? you but, but, like, you got to help each other, okay? We got to help each other, okay? Here we go. How many got? Two more? There we go. Hmm? Did you get some? What kind of advice did you get? I'm sports. You guys got a necklace already, right? But you didn't. There we go. You good? Do you get advice? Good advice from your neighbors? Yeah. Do they understand you better? We understand each other real good. Did you? <laughs> There's three. Let me find another one. There we go. All right. Did you get one? Okay. Here we go. How are we? Who didn't get a necklace yet? Did you get a necklace? Do you have a necklace? You got a bracelet. Excellent. Did you get one? Excellent. Good. Okay. Last section. Last section. Who, who else didn't get a necklace last time? Did you get one? Did you get advice? You didn't get advice. Give her some. See, see if you can give her some advice. There we go. Take one of those. There we go. Did you get some advice? Good. Did your neighbor help you? Good. Yeah? Did you guys, were you having a chance to talk? Did you? Excellent. Excellent. I'm almost down to the bottom. You get a necklace already? No? Let's see what we've got in here. We'll see what we've got. There we go. There we go. Excellent. Did you guys get to talk? No, you didn't get to talk? I mean, to each other? Did you get a chance to talk to each other? Whoops. Couple more. Couple more. Here we go. Did you get a chance to talk with each other? All right. So I don't mean to make fun of this, all right, ladies? But it is hard for us to reach out and get help, right? because sometimes the girls at school have better shoes or boots or they wear skinny jeans or I don't or whatever. Whatever it takes, make a commitment to the things within you that have strength, that hold value to you, okay? So, so, as we end up today, I wanna show you what my brother, so my brother was in the Navy and he works for my dad's company now and this is what he sees every day from his house. He lives on the point of a lake and he looks out and this is what it looks like. Of course, the weather changes, but this is the possibilities he sees 
at his house where he lives every day. And so do any of you have advice, and I mean really strong, powerful advice for people here? It, it, we're not gonna be personal, we're not gonna say, well, she said or he said. I'm, I'm, I'm asking for advice that you have about, about where you come from, where your strength is, where your, where your um, challenges and your commitment lies. So points here, yes. You have a choice to look at the bright side or the dark side of things. Excellent. So a choice in how you how you view things. Very nice. Other advice for your for people around the around the room. Yes, ma'am. Keep moving forward and don't look back. Ooh, keep moving forward. Very nice. Excellent. Yes, ma'am. Be optimistic, not pessimistic. Ooh, how do you do that? You guys think about it. If anybody's got op optimistic versus pessimistic tr advice, let me know. Attempt your goals. Ooh, so more perseverance. Okay, excellent. Yep, advice. That you don't always have to raise your goals like higher than everybody else. You just raise them as high as you can. That was profound. So do your best and do what do what works right now. Yes, ma'am. When you're doing chores or anything, like never ever give up and just keep moving forward, like no matter what. <laughs> no matter what. I like that. Can you come live at my house? <laughs> Excellent. Back here. Let's see what you ladies have to say. To always be happy. Ooh, it's a choice, isn't it? It's, it's a hard choice. Um, face your fears and do it. Oh my gosh, you ladies should write books. Yes, ma'am. Be positive, not negative. Okay, excellent. Yes, ma'am. It doesn't matter who you are, you're, you're special in your own ways. Individualism. Yes, ma'am. You're strong no matter what. Excellent. Strength. Strength. Okay, let's go over here. I think I've avoided you guys over here, haven't I? What do you have to say? Always look on the positive side. Be positive, because we have a choice. Yes, ma'am. Be respectful. Be respectful. Nice. Very nice. Yes, ma'am. Keep, keep your head up and charge the mountain. Ooh. 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 Can you come see me in a minute? Okay, because I've got to, in fact, go get one of the baskets up there, one of the boxes, one of those. Yes, ma'am. Face your fears and don't look back. Face your fears. Excellent. Yep. Excellent. There you go. Yes, ma'am. Don't give up. Don't give up. Up because I think my bag is empty. All right. And yes, ma'am. When the going gets tough, keep going. Keep going. Any other true words of wisdom? Here we go. Every day a new opportunity blossoms. It does. Yeah. It does. There we go. Yeah, I should have asked for you. Here we go. Yes, ma'am. When nothing goes right, go left. <laughs> Whoa, that's a ba dum bum. <laughs> Ladies, I, you have each other. Please don't stop this. Please let this keep growing and keep feeding each other. You'll go back to school. You'll be in a lot of places this week, next week, next month. Take the strength with you, okay? And be a scientist too. That wouldn't be a bad thing, right? Thank you very much. You guys have a great day. Thank you very much. Uh, the last thing we're going to do, and parents bear with us, we're running about 15 minutes late here. Uh, one of our uh, science experiments went over. The, uh, they were working on getting uh, an artery open, and we ran a little, uh, little late on that science experiment. But uh, we can't leave without doing our, our drawings for the, the super points that everybody earned. You can win once here. You can't win more than one item. Also, on the back tables back there, there's a bunch of fifth, third bank bags. Please, take those home with you. Uh, you can use them for lunch bags. You can put your money in it when you take it to the bank. Uh, my wife uses the one we got last year for shoes, and she takes them to work. But uh, fifth, third bank, one of our corporate sponsors, and there's about 150 of those bags back there. But please take one home with you. Here we go. We're going to start drawing. You win once. Okay. Grace Drosky, come on up and uh, Bob, give, give, give Grace something there. Sophie Current. Michaela Jones. Is she still here? Is she here? It's M I C A E L A Jones. Okay, uh, Grandy is the last name, Jada, Jada Grandy. Okay, Elizabeth Fairchild. 
Elizabeth, okay. And we already had a Sophie Current. Marley Fowler. Bershila. Bershila Williams. Morgan Kramer. Brenna Monroe. Colleen O'Connor. Aaron Rogers. <laughs> okay, Brianna Det Detmond, D E N T M O N D. Brianna, are you here? Okay. Okay, Mary Pavey. Avery Gill. Camilla Liban, Liban, Liban. Okay, she's Madison Miller. Parker Bennett. Tanya Martinez. DeLacy. DeLacy, D-E-N-O-O. DeLacy, okay. Area. Area Thompson. Cassandra, Cassandra Madero, M-A-D-E-R-O. Mary Claire Hamilton. Leticia. Leticia. And it's M-E-L-G-L-Z-A, Magoza. Leticia, are you here? Okay, Christina Van. Jillian Fast. Woo! Maya Barbie. Abby Marin, M-A-R-I-N. Megan Ward. Abby Davis. Yancy Lopez. Michaela Jones. Okay. Alexis. Alexis RB. Alexis RB. RB Alexis. Okay. Janelle. Uh, e U C A R N A C I O N. Are you here? Okay. Maggie Peckham. Sydney. Okay, Sydney. We're a tough last name here. Maroa? M I O O R I? Is that it? Is that you? Zoe Schaefer. Kristen Lack. Alina Tobar. Brashila Williams. Heather. Marban. Heather Marban. <laughs> Chloe, Math Cl Chloe Matheson. Abby Talaga. Yeah. Mercy Cascaris. Am I, is Mercy here? She's in the restroom? Okay, Mercy's in the restroom. Ellie Clark. Hope Tom. Hope Tom. Hope Tommy. Sherilyn Davis. Aaron Vigna. How we doing over there, guys? Okay, Sophie Metz, M-E-T-Z. 
Remember, you can only win one, so if I get a duplicate here, let me know. Sophie Baker? <laughs> Natalia Thorne? Natalia, Natalia Thorne? Carly D, Carly D, Carly D. Brianna M. Smith. Brianna M. Smith. Pick me. <laughs> Brooke Matheson. Teresa B-U-I. Bowie. Bowie. Teresa Bowie. Maureen, or no, Mackenzie, S-C-H-L-I-E-M. Tashana. Tashana Poole. <laughs> Teresa Reeves. Lauren Merzio, M-A-R-O-S-I, Marozzi. Kaylee, Kaylee, Kutchin, 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 K-U-T-C-H-I-N, Kaylee, Kaylee, how do you pronounce your last name? Kutchin. Kutchin, okay. Tessa Rowan, Emma Harmon, Sammy Zielinski, Sammy Zielinski, Madison Miller, Ebony Pratt, Ebony Pratt. Kate Naraki. Bryn Kavanaugh. Brian? Brian. Bryn. Bryn. Bryn Kavanaugh. <laughs> Charlotte Divas. D I V A S. Katie. Maritetti. <coughs> Katie Marintetti. Marintet. Okay. Michaela. Michaela. P U T H A N C H. Okay, is Michaela here? All right. We said your name. We said your last name. Kerasee. K A R S E E J A N I O. Is she here? All right. Isabel Mayhew. Jennifer Bell, Anna Munzo, M U N O Z, Gabby Smith, Camelia Lebone. Do we already call your name? Mercy, are you back? Mercy, is she here? You got it. All right. Ellie Clark. L.A. Clark. You already got one. Okay. Autumn Watson. Hey, Aaron, I think we've called before. Marshall Childs. Marshall Childs. Katie Rogers. Katie Rogers. Mary Pavy. Mary Pavy. Aubrey Hope. Aubrey Holcomb. Anna Parvlack. Anna Parvlack. How are we doing over there? Four items left. Autumn Watson. All recalled, thank you. Sandra Mendoza, do we already call your name? Nope, okay. Avery girl we called. Tiny we called. Bridget M. Bridget M. One more. And Brooke Matheson. Jody one, okay. Lauren Marcia, M A R O S I. Already called. Brinkley Ward. Yay. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the committee that put this together, 
I thank you for coming. Nobody can leave without an adult. So please, find your parent, but if you, nobody can leave without an adult. Thank you for coming. Please pick up all your stuff off the floor too, all your bags and everything.